Hello everyone. Welcome to the uh, Kongsberg hybrid solution for diesel electric offshore vessels webinar. My name is uh, Per Christian Wuxetar. I am a sales manager in the Kongsberg's conversions and performance group. Together with me today on this webinar, we have Carl Alexander Viren, who is going to be assisting me in answering the questions. We're going to have a Q&A session after this presentation, and I encourage you guys to ask questions during my uh, presentation, and then we'll do a, a walkthrough of those ones uh, after I've been finished with the material that I want to show you. First of all, here in uh, Kongsberg uh, Maritime, we have, uh, after the merging with the uh, Rolls-Royce Commercial Marine, achieved a quite significant range of products that we can offer you uh, as customers. We have equipment from bridge to propellers, and also, of course, from deep sea to outer space with our sensors and uh, robotics side of the organization. Most of the things that we're going to talk about today is a part of our integrated solutions department. And uh, with that in mind, we'll skip over to our reference list just to show you what we have done so far. In 2010, we delivered the first solution with batteries. And since that, we have now installed products from our battery range or and hybrid solution to over 60 vessels that are operating in different market segments today. Mainly, we are focusing on the platform support vessels and, um, and offshore vessels, but we also have delivered to the cruise fleet, uh, fishing vessels, as well as actually also a sailing vessel. I don't know if everybody of you have read about this, but just recently we installed batteries on the sailing vessel uh, Stadsrod Elemkul, which is now sailing with batteries on board the vessel. When they are doing propellerless or when they're sailing in the vessel in sailing mode, they can actually recharge the batteries by feathering the propeller, which is quite cool. To start off with, we have developed a energy storage system, which is a cabinet consisting of a control module and cooling module, and it's built up with modular uh, racks. The racks, they are built up with modules, and the modules are built up by battery cells. This is a highly modular design, and it allows us to deliver capacities uh, from one rack to up to 10 per control unit. Typically, we deliver 112 kilowatt hours per rack. So maximum capacity of our standard product range is 1,120 kilowatt hours per control module. Another thing that's important to emphasize is that we are taking the safety and uh, in the design of our products really uh, seriously. We conduct a lot of tests, especially focusing on the propagation side of the uh, potential events. We test them not only standalone in modules, but we also test them stacked in cabinets. And we are always trying to make sure that we are able to handle and can control the potential propagation events. This is achieved by our three uh, barrier safety design. So we have a passive barrier between the uh, 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 battery modules. We have active air cooling of all the modules. And we also have a water mist propagation control system uh, that is um, um, unlocked <clears throat> or activated on the battery system if we detect uh, increased temperatures or um, uh, other um, events. Our product range consists of three battery technologies. We have our Save Energy Plus, which is a 1C solution. We have our Save Energy, which is our 2C solution. And we have our Save Power, which is our 3C solution. Typically, when installing batteries on board vessels that are already sailing, we have challenges on available space on board. And that's why we have de developed uh, energy storage deck house 
which is a standardized unit in different sizes, that we have been able to fit all the necessary equipment uh, required inside uh, to, to convert a vessel into a hybrid vessel. Depending on the size, uh, there is, of course, also the, the need for a transformer. And um, some of our deck houses also has the capacity to, to house that inside. We'll come back to that a bit later. Our deck house consists of two rooms. We have a drive room and a battery room. The drive room is an A0 room with the, uh, the converters and the potential transformers required for the installation. And the battery room is an A60 room, which houses the uh, control unit of the cooling system and also the battery racks. Typically, we see these are the kind of the most standard solutions that are requested out there today. So we have a 20 feet solution without a transformer. We have a 24 feet solution without a transformer. And we have a 26 feet solution that can be delivered with or without a transformer, dependent on the power requirements from our clients. The smaller unit has the capacity to house up to 650 kilowatt hours, while the 24 and 26 feet solutions have the option to house 912 kilowatt hours. Should we decide to, or need a lot of power to be delivered to the switchboard, the 2700 kV is the maximum we can do. Then we have no space inside of the deck house for the transformer, and that one has to be placed inside or the vessel somewhere. But we are also able to deliver the 26 feet with a transformer, but then with a the reduced amount of power that we are able to deliver to the vessel. So these are the, the three standard products. And uh, it's also worth mentioning that we have a few of these pre-made, which leads us to uh, be able to have short delivery times on the standardized units. going to talk a bit about the electrical integration of, the, of this uh, technology, which has been, uh, uh, yeah, there's, there's a lot of ways of integrating a battery into a vessel, to, to say it the least. We have identified our three most common ones, which is the uh, dedicated solution, where we have only one connection from the deck house into either bus A or bus B on your switchboard. This one can be delivered uh, as one unit, or you can have two deck houses delivered, connected to each side of the switchboard. Another way of doing things is having this, as indicated here on the presentation, there is a manual changeover, which allows us to select which side of the switchboard we want to connect the batteries to. Benefit of this is that if you want to achieve redu reduction in your running hours, you're able to balance out those reductions from either base, uh, port or bus side A or bus side B. We also have what we call a power assignment solution, which is a solution where we have the same connection, one connection from the battery, but we have a breaker setup that allows us to split the power to both sides of the switchboard, or we can then uh, have the, the full capacity on either side A or side B, and as I said, split that capacity on both sides at the same time. The last solution that I'm going to mention here is our power allocator solution. This is a solution where we have a deck house that is connected to both sides of the switchboard at the same time. And this also opens up functionality that allows us to transfer power from one side of the bus bar to the other one with the, the main bus tie breaker open. This can help us achieve closed bus type benefits without actually going the way around the, the class societies to achieve closed bus tie notation on the switchboard. We also have what we call the energy storage systems energy management system, which is the interface between the, uh, the energy storage system that we have and other KM control system products. So our DP systems or IAS systems and so on. The energy management system is allowing us to gain further benefit or beneficial features uh, that we can utilize in the battery deck house utilization on board. 
by talking to our DP system, we're able to predict incoming forces and we can prepare the power management system for those incoming forces so that we are able to select if we want the battery to take the load or if we want to ramp up the engines to be able to take the load. We also see that we have uh, a lot of vessels sailing out there without, without our equipment on board and it's important to us to be able to also integrate into those. So we have developed a hybrid control system which is using standardized PMS hardware from our portfolio. This is designed to fit into almost every single switchboard manufacturer's equipment out there and this will allow us to enable hybrid functionality to the switchboard without compromising the existing safety features that is already in place on the power management system. Another thing that's worth mentioning here is our AGS, which has uh, been developed in, in many years, but we have developed what we call a zone AGS. And this is also based on the same standardized PMS hardware where we're able to take uh, products from our portfolio, add it to the existing switchboard to gain closed bus type functionality. We'll get a little, little bit back to the closed bus type functionality benefits when we come to the, to the performance side of things, but in short, we're, um, we're allowing um, the existing switchboard to be reclassified into a closed bus type operation. And with that, of course, enabling the highest potential fuel savings we can achieve, as well as reduction in running hours. We've seen that there is a lot of numbers out there when it comes to how much it's pot potential savings you can achieve on, on batteries uh, installations. And we also seen that the numbers will vary from vessel to vessel, and of course also will vary depending on the crew that's operating the vessel. We have developed uh, analytics services that we can use before we install uh, the system on board. We can do what we call the pre-upgrade analytics, that is determining the potential savings that can be achieved on individual customer specific vessels using data. And that data can be picked up from either Kongsberg equipment, we can receive operational data from you guys. Uh, we can also use our systems that actually do real-time monitoring of the vessel. And of course, the estimations or the calculation accuracy is dependent on the quality of data that we get. So if we want to have a really, really deep look into the potential in a vessel, it's really beneficial to start looking into a system that's actually monitoring the current performance. Good thing about doing that is that we can, after the upgrade as well, look at the actual differences. So we can do the post upgrade analytics side, which is a nice thing. We are kind of giving an estimate on the potential fuel savings up ahead, reinstalling the products. And then afterwards, when the vessel has been sailing for a while, we have the tools necessary to do the actual uh, post upgrade analytics side of things where we look into the vessel's operational profiles, the running equipment, and also of course the, uh, the um, efficiency of the products that are running. One other thing worth mentioning is that with this post upgrade analytics, it's also possible for us to look into further saving potential that can be achieved either by operational uh, crew uh, changing their behavior or adding other components from our portfolio. Most of you guys know that the, the, the way that we save fuel in a battery installation and a hybrid conversion is changing the engine load characteristics. Most of the vessels out there today has been designed with a system that's redundant for DP operation. And that redundancy is uh, normally then also sized up to handle every single worst failure uh, weather conditions there are, which means that you have a lot of available power spinning in, in reserve when you're operating the vessel in normal conditions. Typically the engine load is in the low 10 to 15% during a DP operation for a, for a vessel. And that is not a good area to be. You have a really high specific fuel oil consumption in that area, and as well as an unhealthy operational area for your equipment. So the whole kind of idea about the hybrid conversion here is to 
of course, increase the amount of running hours that you're using in a higher load. And that is done by shutting down engines. I'm going to talk a bit about the, uh, the uh, technology here. So we have, of course, class approval equipment from all the major class societies, as well as Schifferts Direktorate here in Norway. Uh, we have a lot of these uh, kind of patented and unique features that I've mentioned from uh, using data from the DP system to further optimize the operational uh, profiles. Um, relatively low weight, we have the highest energy density packaged into a container out there in the market. And last but not least, we have started to partner up with several key uh, yards around the globe to be able to do what we call the turnkey projects. We see a steady increase of uh, requests coming in where we are uh, challenged, challenged on delivering a, a quotation or a, an offer to the client where everything is included that's required. To be able to do this, we need to uh, partner up with the yards to take care of the installation process of things. So we have now started to do this and we have locations in Norway, in Spain, in Namibia, in Americas, in the Southeast Asia and China. With our established partners, we see that the typical downtime period for a vessel in a turnkey installation is about three weeks. So that's three weeks from the vessel coming in till it's sailing out there. In some cases, fully electric sailing out there. Um, to, to finish the, the conversion. So then I'm going to just do a quick summary here of the uh, key benefits of upgrading to a KM hybrid solutions. So we have quite a significant reference list already. We have really high focus on safety and redundancy. We have our patented enhanced energy control side of things, which allows us to gain even further savings than just putting a battery on board a, uh, a vessel. We have the capacity and capability to perform uh, installations both with open and closed bus tie operations. So we have the equipment necessary or needed to, to also close the bus tie. We are partnering up with key partners in uh, globally to, to be able to deliver the turnkey capabilities to you. We have a proven uh, significant and fuel and emission reduction from several projects. We have partners and service engineers globally able to help you out should there be any problems. And of course, we have the analytics services and the verification uh, capabilities that is often required by clients in order to justify the investment. So with that in mind, I thank you all for listening in. Um, we're gonna jump over now to the Q&A side of the presentation. I encouraged you to, and to put some questions in. Uh, so I hope that you will have some questions for me and together with Carl, we will answer them as, as, as good as we can. nothing yet it's not uh, was it so clear that there's no questions uh, that needs to be uh, to be asked if that's the case then i'm really happy all right first question coming in are you ready uh, carl yes yeah, so we can just do this uh, in in uh, in pairs here. There's one question that's uh, being asked, and that's about which vessel types that are moving into this technology. 
Okay, yeah. So many of the vessels uh, that we did conversions for is uh, for the offshore industry. <clears throat> if you look into the new build market, uh, we also do deliver into uh, all the segments as uh, by Christian mentioned on the reference slide. Uh, by today, it's uh, roughly 60 vessels um, with uh, around 90 systems delivered to these. So some of these systems, uh, for example, where the battery system is built into the vessel, that's uh, vessels with uh, one or two battery rooms. Yeah. yeah. As long as there is available space on board a vessel and they have some way of utilizing the battery power into either propulsion or the accommodation of things, then it's a candidate. Of course, we see the, the highest uh, saving potential is in vessels where you're usually running a lot of gensets for redundancy reasons. But um, yeah, as I mentioned, also sailing vessels can benefit from, from a hybrid system. Right, any other questions? Yeah, so there's one, uh, there's a few questions coming in here. Yeah, vessels with variable load uh, can be, can be uh, benef or benefit from, from uh, batteries. If you, have a, if you have a vessel that is uh, uh, in need of power bursts in short period, periods of time, for example, a trawler, it is possible to utilize batteries here. You can, instead of starting up extra, or extra engines, you can use, utilize the battery to, to uh, take the load from the heavy consumers. And of course, the benefit with a fishing vessel is that you also can, in some cases, uh, recharge your batteries with the reactive forces normally involved in, uh, in uh, a fishing vessel, especially when they have electrical winches. And uh, let's see here, there's another question called, can you explain a bit about more uh, or t talk a bit more, more about the batteries themselves? What the technology we are using? Okay, so for the battery systems that we are, that we are um, delivering into the marine industry, we are utilizing uh, um, NMC cells that we uh, buy uh, mass produced in modules and we do the integration into, uh, uh, or we do the integration into our cabinet structure with the marine approval and the class approval of, of uh, our system as, uh, as the, the, from the cabinet side of it and, and then the rest in the vessel. Um, the battery modules we are using as uh, Pakistia mentioned earlier, we have three standardized modules. One is uh, for the, the, the most common solution uh, is the save energy which is a 2C rating, which means that from the system he showed you on the, on the earlier slide with the, the battery system, it delivers up to two uh, megawatt in power and can store one megawatt hour. We also have a, a 3C application which then can uh, deliver uh, three times uh, the kilowatt hour rating in power, as well as uh, an application for, for where there is a higher need of energy density on board a vessel with one and a half C. Is that a good answer, Pakistan? Yeah. Let's see, there's another question here. Uh, offshore wind sector is looking at ESS for SOVs. What other technologies would be required to fully decarbonize? Uh, batteries. In yeah, um, Carl, would you like to answer this one? Okay, so the offshore wind sector is looking for at the energy storage system for SOVs, but besides that, other technologies will be required to fully decarbonize O and M activities. Yeah, that, that's there. There can be many ways to achieve um, a full decarbonization, right? And then you followed up with another thing here: batteries in com combination with other systems like fuel cells or hydrogen combustion engines could be a way to allow the transition. That's correct. In Kongsberg, working, exploring energy storage system together with other 
new emerging technologies. Yes, so we do uh, work also with emerging technologies as well. You mentioned fuel cells here. This is something we also have uh, uh, played a lot uh, with uh, in our energy lab. And we have one fuel cell there where we are trying to, or we are um, not trying, we are, we are playing with it to be able to, to um, control this in the energy management system uh, as we would like to for the future. Thank you, Carl. Smallest vessel fitted with batteries and what do they, does that ship perform well? Uh, of course, batteries take some space and uh, on small vessels, that available space is not often <laughs> something that we find. Uh, we have a, one vessel here in Norway that's operating uh, for a kind of maintaining the uh, the what you how do you call it the sea the the sea marks and the the, the lights and the poles that are out in the in the ship's uh, passageways, and they are quite small compared to a PSV. They have a, a significant sized battery pack and they are quite a small vessel, so they are actually doing their operation uh, like a normal day job uh, type. So they're going out in the morning and then coming back into the to the shoreside in the evening. And this is do, done actually full electric. So they're able to utilize the batteries uh, the entire day and then they're charging the vessel during the night. Okay, still have about three minutes left. Is there any other questions? Let's see, does Kongsberg have a web application slash tool to perform pre-assessment of ESS solutions and other technologies? Carl? Um, so usually um, if the customer wants to have a, a battery uh, to, to do a, a pre-assessment, what we do is that the, the, the quickest way is to contact uh, Per Christian here in the call and uh, inform him about your vessel and, and your needs. And Pat Christian will then maybe start to ask some more questions usually. And then uh, we deep dive into the vessel and we try to, uh, to gather some data together with you or if you have data already. And then uh, to do um, set up the case, see what is the benefit for you and, and what can um, this deliver after it's installed. And um, yeah, and move on from there. That's the, the standard way of doing it. And we would uh, love to uh, elaborate together with you, with your vessels. We Question from Kevin there, uh, Carl. I have not actually been thinking about this. Have you uh, looked into the mixture of... Uh... Yeah, so this is basically, this is a, it's a good question. So yeah. In a, in a large in a larger so the question is is Kongsberg looking into hybrid installation with different two different type or even more battery types in the same system so for example high energy density cells mixed with high C rate cells yes there could be applications where you have um, that that's where, where you have more battery installed on board a vessel and the application could typically be where you have a need of a longer period of time uh, for for zero emission together with uh, some uh, spinning reserve requirements, or for example, uh, heavy duty peak shaving, then this would be a, a, a typical application where it uh, can be very, it can be suitable. Uh, traditionally in the, in the conversion, if we look into the PSVs with the deck house uh, as seen in the presentation, this is um, usually for spinning reserve and smaller peak shaving and delivered with the same type as standard, uh, most common is three, two or three C batteries basically. But yes, this is uh, something we are looking into and, and it's always, if the needs are there, there is no problem to, to design up a system with different type of C rate uh, in, the, in the total scope. Yeah. Very good. That's the time, uh, time up for us in, uh, in this uh, webinar. I hope that you found it somewhat interesting and uh, of course, should be any questions or or uh, or more information is is needed. Uh, you have my contact details here. Feel free to to shoot me an email. 
just a quick mention, there's, there's going to be a survey sent out after this uh, webinar, and I hope as many as you have the possibility to answer that uh, for us would be greatly appreciated. So with that in mind, I wish you all a great day and uh, hope to see you guys soon in real life <laughs> when this pandemic is over. Until then, stay safe and we speak. Thank you. Bye. Bye.